Hey, I'm Bob Davis. Welcome to What the Flash Fridays. I want to be able to share lighting with you every week, and I want you to get passion. I want you to dig in. We're, it's a new year, so we have a new beginning. So let's all come together every Friday, share some images, throw down some lighting challenges, email me with your requests, and I'll share my knowledge and my skill and how I would approach those things. Uh, I was really blessed. We had a great wedding. The last wedding of the year for us was for the Bachelorette, Ashley and JP. The images were featured in People Magazine and talk about a What the Flash challenge. Even though it was outside during the ceremony and they had all kinds of TV light, inside and later in the day, I had to light every one of those images. Who says California always has pretty light, right? It rained here. So I used my What the Flash techniques and my lighting skills to get through these challenges. I use speed lights inside and out. So we're going to pick one image on the back of the screen and we're going to go through it and we're going to show you all the metadata and I'm going to share with you the lighting tips and techniques that I used for that image. So remember, email me, throw down a challenge. I'd love to hear your what the flash lighting situations. And also, if you want to dig deeper into lighting, join me on udemy.com for what the flash, the evolution of light. All right, so let's dig deeper into some photographs. Okay, welcome to What the Flash Fridays. So we're going to dig into some lighting techniques and I want to share with you to empower you to start playing. It's the beginning of the new year, so let's dig into some basic things. Let's get that flash out of the hot shoe and go right for some off-camera lighting. You know what? I truly believe in getting that flash off-camera. We want to create some highlight and some shadow areas so that way we have depth and dimension within the two-dimensional space that we're working in in photography. So this is a recent engagement shoot. Everything was lit. Everything has some off-camera lighting just to accent. I know I say this a lot, but I am an available light photographer. I use all the light that's available to me, and I'm going to say it often. Another thing I'm going to say often is this simple rule, and once you master it and understand it, it allows you to take your lighting to a whole new place. Shutter speed is equal to ambient light. Aperture is equal to the flash output. So if I want some more ambient light in the environment, I'll slow down my shutter speed, let that light burn in, and then I use my flash to give me, let's say, an aperture value of f4, f5.6. That's the output that I'm going to need from the flash. So let's dig in. This is Lauren and Pat, and this is their engagement session. And we're going to jump right in here. Pat was a trader, is a trader, at uh, the Chicago Stock Exchange. Actually, Chicago Board of, uh, Board of Options, CBO. So we wanted to put Pat at ease. So the first image we did was on the trading floor, of course, after trading hours. This is a very dark, very flat environment. I am going for some available light here in the background. So that's where my first approach would be. To pick the ISO that I'm going to shoot at. So this particular image in this setting we're shooting at 1600 ISO. We're using two off-camera speed lights here. So we have one behind as a separation light. See this nice highlight and rim light on Lauren and Pat? That's at manual mode and it's just probably kicking in at around a quarter power. I'm using the Canon EOS 1DX and I was using a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens at 38 millimeters in this shot and then my front light that's being filled in is a second Canon speed light and that's within the Rogue flash bender. I'm choosing to use the Rogue flash bender in this shoot because I want to shape and control the light so it falls on them. Sometimes I would use a light sphere. The reason I'm not using the light sphere here is because I don't want the light going in a 360 degree radius. I want to concentrate it forward on them. My background light has a rogue grid on it, the 40 degree grid. So again, I'm shaping the light to just the back of their heads. So just a overview of the equipment we're using. It's an EOS 1DX 24 to 70 millimeter lens and uh, two to three Canon speed lights. They are all the 600 EXRT. RT meaning the radio transmission is built in. 
the master device on the camera, which is giving out all the instructions, is the STE3. So there is no flash coming directly from the camera. So you can see by using a shutter speed of a 30th of a second, I'm allowing this background light from the big board to burn in. So we get that light, some of the environment light. And then the pop of light, the sparkle, is all from the speed lights and the light modifiers that I'm using. Now for this particular image, I chose a shallow depth of field. So I put the focus right on the card that Pat is holding. Really simple, really quick. Once you get your settings dialed in, you can shoot away. Another thing I want to mention is I did filter my speed lights. What I mean by that is the environmental light here is tungsten by nature very very warm toned so I put a full CTO correct to orange gel over the flash and then I shot in manual white balance mode meaning I was shooting in Kelvin at 3200 degrees Kelvin that is the tungsten spectrum of light so now I have great color between my speed lights and the environmental light there's no color shift here so we're just going to kind of quickly go through these, a couple black and whites, change things up, go for a wider shot, right? Lighting is dialed in, lighting's in position, my background light is in manual mode. My foreground light, my main light, is in ETTL mode. I'm combining the two. So you can notice by my settings here, I've just slightly adjusted my ISO. I wanted to drop the background a little bit more to get some separation so the camera is now less sensitive to light. I've also increased my shutter speed from a 30th to a 40th of a second. Effectively, by changing both of those, the ISO and the shutter speed, I've reduced the ambient light by at least a half a stop. So let's keep cruising through. I want to keep these short and sweet. Here you go, just a different composition looking at them. I'm addicted to backlight. I got to tell you, it's just amazing. I love it because it pops them off the background. I could have done this shot with just one front main light. Up high, nice, diffused, looking great. But then they would kind of blend in. They both have dark hair. Their head would blend right into this background. I want something, again, to create that illusion of depth and space. So I use a backlight a lot. It's not just for in the studio anymore. Use it on location. So let's just go to uh, contact sheet view of this and you can see we stayed in the board of trade for a little while. Do some couple shots, do an individual portrait, a scene setter of the background. You know, Don would take these images and then create a guest book for them. So you need detail shots, you need some variety always remember to shoot for the book. You know, I got to stress this to everybody I want to share it with that's listening. Don't just shoot and hand over your images as you shoot and burn. People are going to lose those files. They're going to lose those images. They're not going to have any memories. You know, just the other day, it was Christmas, holidays, family was in town, and we were going through a bunch of old photographs from my mom and my grandma, and we have those images because we have prints. We have photo books. We have output. So remember, do the entire job. Do the shoot. If you sell or provide the digital negatives, that's up to you. But give them something concrete. Give them the book. As Dawn and I like to say, the book is the hook. So get those images printed. Make prints. Get canvases. Get them in a book. Because digital files are just fleeting. People are going to upload them to their computer or Facebook or something like that. And then they're going to disappear when they get a new computer or when the next Facebook comes along. So give them something that they can archive and have and remember. All right, let's get back to the shoot. So you can see my ISO in this image has jumped up. We went from 1600 to 2000. Reason being is I wanted to be able to handhold the camera a little bit better, drag in some more ambient light back here. I wanted to shoot at that 30th of a second to create some motion blur from the cards, the trading cards that were flying around. Dawn was my assistant on this and she was throwing the cards in the air, we're dragging the shutter and then popping the flash. Really nice effect. So you get this little bit of motion blur because as the cards are falling you have the ambient light, slow shutter speed and BAM! That pap, the flash pops, freezing the action. It's fun. A lot of energy. 
All right, so let's go to another scene. We did the interior of the Chicago uh, Board of Options Exchange. Get this trade correct in one of these days here. And, you know, let's jump to something a little bit uh, more romantic, a little bit sexy. So they have a viewing gallery at the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. And this is where people can go and, you know, look down as actual trading is going on. So we took Lauren and Pat up there. Of course, it says no flash photography. But because we're doing a, a, a stylized lifestyle shoot for them, I was able to light it. Again, same technique. One light in the background, one in the foreground. Background light is in manual mode. It has a 25 degree grid on it now because I really want to confine that light to right about here. The front light is in ETTL mode, but it's about minus two in exposure value. So it's just filling in enough so you see their faces. And it has to be at a 45 degree angle to this window so we don't get flashback. Also, I was shooting with a much longer lens and that's easier to control. So now my ISO is at 1000, aperture of 4.5, shutter speed of an 80th of a second just to capture some of this ambient that's there. All right, so now let's take these lights outside, have some fun. Everybody knows you could use flash inside, right? That's a given. What do you do if you're outside? and it's a bit of a stormy day and the sunshine isn't there and you don't have the sparkle right so here's here's the scene that i was presented with you know it was started off as a nice afternoon the clouds rolled in we're beginning to run out of daylight 8 30 at night what do you do well you create the light you want so for these images of them frolicking around the lakefront along lake michigan way off on camera right. You can kind of see this telltale sign of light right here. I have two Canon 600 XRTs on a light stand using the triple threat by IDC Photo. That allows me to gang up two speed lights to act as one. And that's creating the light here. Yes, I could have shot this available light, but it wouldn't have that sparkle. Dig the sparkle in Lauren's face, right? So it gives a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of shine, and it gives that separation from the background. So let's take a couple color images, and you can really see it begin to shine. You have the highlights in here. That's all the light from my speed lights, right? It's creating the light you want. Look at the sparkle in the waves. Black and white image color image and the flash is actually freezing and putting those little highlights in there if I didn't light this or augment it it'd be very very flat so I use my speed lights to give it a kick to give it some punch to bring in that sparkle so th these images were shot at 1600 ISO again you saw how stormy the sky was aperture 3.5 and 1 1 25th of a second shutter speed so let's jump to something a little bit more fun here. And you could see the image starts to get more dramatic. There's that stormy sky. We knew the rain was coming. And we're going to have fun with the rain. Why not? Make it different. So ambient light is controlled by my shutter speed. I wanted to underexpose and really bring that sky down. So I underexposed the ambient by about two stops. Check out my histogram. This is the luminance level. So I have good exposure from left to right. Here's my color. RGB values, a little bit of blue because that sky is very blue. Here we're using one backlight and the ambient light is my front fill, right? So we just have one backlight coming in from behind and a quarter power manual mode. So let's cruise through a few of these. Really, really awesome and fun. Again, the lighting is making this sing couple are having fun, got my lights in the right spot, I'm dialed in, and then you just shoot away. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. All right. So we're going to close out here really quick because, again, I want to keep these short and sweet with one of my favorite images from the shoot. And this is when it began to rain, right? Love it. Little backlight again, and when you're backlighting it, when there's any kind of debris in the air, it lights it up. Look, the rain sparkles like diamonds. All right? This is dirty light. 
I wanted to mix the light up here. These are sodium mercury vapors. I put uh, the flash behind them. I didn't use a CTO because I wanted that warm feeling from behind them. So I just popped the flash bear back there with the 25 degree grid. You can see I have a nice tight circle around them. So it's shaping the light, the road grid, no front fill at all. And the other light is all the ambient. So this is ISO 1250, an aperture of f4 at a 15th of a second. Now you might say, how could I be shooting an 85 millimeter lens at a 15th of a second? Well, for one, it does have IS. Two, the flash is actually freezing the motion because my background is two stops less than the actual exposure value. So the flash is actually the main light that's freezing the action. All right, so we're going to close out here with this image. And I want, uh, I want you to email me at bob at Davis Workshops. Throw down a few challenges. Throw down some questions. And join us here periodically for What the Flash Fridays. This is how the story goes. It happened this way a year ago. Kicking around the east side of town, just me solo.